Yeah, so I'm Dr. Chris Nyquist. I'm a pediatric infectious disease physician and the medical director for infection prevention and control at Children's Hospital Colorado. And I want to thank you for coming to talk about the upsurge in respiratory virus illnesses that we're having essentially throughout the nation and also throughout Colorado. Um, we just got a call from the CDC that they've identified that most of the isolates that we have sent them for testing are the enterovirus 68 that is circulating throughout the nation, causing illness in young children, giving them increased wheezing and asthma problems. And that's why we have a huge number of patients in the hospital getting admitted. And that's also why we've started our early wintertime respiratory visitation restrictions where children under age 13, we keep them from coming to visit in the hospital unless there's extenuating circumstances. So we really can maintain a safe environment. People are pretty freaked out about what's going on right now. I mean, is, is, there, is there a real cause for alarm or is this just something that people are unused? So I think the things that are important, it's September, we haven't seen this many patients this early for respiratory illnesses. And if you take a look at our numbers last year, our numbers for admissions are about 12 to 15% more in September, which is unusual for us. We know that this virus, which is a common cold virus with a special name called enterovirus 68, hits kids with asthma so that they have an exacerbation where they have to come to the emergency department and emergency room. So that's the challenge where if you have an underlying challenge, you might end up being hospitalized. And it's surprising people because their asthma is not under control. It's a common virus that there's no medication for. You can do hand hygiene, washing your hands, coughing in your elbow, um, avoiding sick people. So that's the scary part, the unpredictability, I think. I don't have a great answer, but we do know that children are different. That's one of the things, you know, in a children's hospital, we always talk about kids are different than adults. And anytime you get a cold or a virus, in your lungs, your lung pipes are just a little smaller than adults. And so they may have more severe manifestations compared to adults. Is this something that I probably had myself? You might have. We could send an expensive test to the CDC so if you want to. You said this is a common cold with a, an exotic name. Yeah, it's a, so it's a cold virus, but it's one of the strains that circulates in, in little kind of areas where every couple of years it may circulate. The CDC just had a publication in their MMWR that was an early release talking about their testing and gave a little bit of background information that we've seen this happen every once in a while in these kind of little mini outbreak kind of situations. What happens after that? Do they peter out? Or? It peters out, you go up, and then it goes down, and then it goes away and we'll be ready and set for influenza when it starts sometime in the se season. So is this unprecedented or is this just something normal that you would expect to see every couple of years? Um, it actually is unprecedented um, in the sense that this is very early for us to have so many respiratory illnesses. It happens to be, you know, this virus that causes wheezing in kids in particular and it happens every couple of years or so and we're getting the whole middle of the country hit with this virus. And so what can kids within like five minutes or whatever my child would have died. What, what do we kids and parents expect as far as health stuff? So the key things that parents need to do, if your child's having a difficult time breathing, that's when you call your doctor or call 911 for an emergency situation. And then doing the basic common sense things that we ask moms to do. Your mom always told you wash your hands, cover your mouth when you cough. Those are the things that we tell them to do. But parents have to be alert, especially if a kid has wheezing or any history of wheezing. This might make it a tougher wheezing session for them. So they really need to be on top of that. And then once they get to the hospital, I mean, is this just something that you know that you can take care of and handle, or are they a real risk once they get here? Well, when they come to the hospital, what we do is we treat their asthma, and we try to give them medication to try to stop the wheezing. But they also have to, on their own, heal from the viral infection. So it may take a few days. We've had a handful of children end up in the emergency department going directly to the pediatric intensive care unit because they've been so sick. So it depends on the child of how sick they get. Does this foreshadow a really bad winter season, or do you think it'll be over early and done, or does this mean that it'll be I wish I was Johnny Carson's <laughs> great Karnak, but unfortunately I can't predict. But the thing that we did do is we started our wintertime respiratory visitation already now and plan to go until the springtime. Unless we're really lucky and everything really slows down, we're going to be doing that you know, restriction until end of April. Now this enterovirus is just similar to cold viruses, but it, it's, is it uncommon, somewhat uncommon in and of itself, this enterovirus 68, or 
It's, it's part of it. Our testing initially showed rhinovirus as the virus, and that's why we sent it to the CDC where they have to do specialized tests to find out what the exact name and the number is associated with that virus. And this is one that doesn't circulate all of the time. 75% of our cases that we sent them for testing was, you know, it turned out to be enterovirus 68, but these were other hospitalized patients, 25% were other viruses circulating. So this one has a, you know, tougher time on little kids. We sent, I, I think the number is about 25 samples were sent. Three quarters of them were positive for enterovirus 68. So a handful were other kind of viruses that are circulating in the community. How many did um, ventilators in both primarily the uh, ER 16? Um, so I don't know ex the exact number for the intensive care unit, how many kids are on the ventilator related to EB 68, but we do know that our pediatric ICU patients were some of those that were tested and they did have enterovirus 68. We're seeing children, any from, you know, neonates, little babies, all the way through the whole gamut of what we see up to 21 years of age. And so it really is the entire pediatric population that we're seeing. Young children are having a tougher time, though. Any asthmatics are having Even more of a tough time. If you have any predisposition to wheezing, that really sets you up with this specific viral infection to have a tougher time. But some kids who have never previously been diagnosed with asthma are being affected by this. Correct. Some children who've never wheezed, according to the parents' knowledge, are getting this viral infection and wheezing. And we see that with other viruses, but we're seeing it right now with this specific virus circulating. Now, obviously, it's like an asthma attack is, is very frightening, but can you describe people's age and their on ventilators? I mean, are, are people at risk of dying from this? Are people dying from this? So I don't know of any children who have died related to this specific viral infection. But severe asthma and an asthma attack can be a cause of death, and I think children can get intubated and put on the ventilator related to that. So asthma is a serious illness. So it sounds, so it sounds like, I just want to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. It sounds like there's a lot of people who are getting sick. There are a smaller number of people who are getting quite sick. So as of yet, we don't know anyone who's been killed as a result of this infection. Is that correct? Correct. Is wheezing the only sign? I mean, I, as I understand it, it kind of starts out as the common cold and the symptoms really kind of ramp up. And, and what period of time is what you're looking for? So, again, you know, the illness can start as a common cold with a little bit of runny nose. Some children with viral infections just start with wheezing without a lot of nasal discharge. So, you know, your child is sick. And so, it's difficult to say this is exactly what happens and your child's going to have a problem. I think the wheezing and the difficulty breathing are the two key things that families need to be keeping an eye out for. I think partially this time of year, when you think about school starting over the last couple of weeks, a lot of children are in much closer proximity to each other. We have a virus that we haven't seen circulating in the community. And then we also have the weather within Colorado, specifically with very green, lots of pollen, lots of reasons for asthma exacerbations. But the virus circulating plus everyone together, I think, is probably the biggest reason we're seeing this upswing. Um, I don't know the numbers relative, but we know that Kansas City was one of the first places at our colleague Children's Hospital to report um, enterovirus 68, and they had their samples sent to the CDC, and so they found out pretty quickly, and then we were a little bit slower to find out for our samples. And to your knowledge, is this the hospital that has seen the largest uh, number of individuals uh, who are being treated for uh, severe uh, respiratory problems? So I don't know how many other hospitals are seen, but as a children's hospital, we see a large proportion of the children in the community. And when you're really sick, you end up coming to Children's Hospital and we take care of you. How's your numbers been in the past few days? I know we only have numbers up to the four, but do you feel like it's been holding steady? Note being passed and everything. Note <laughs> being passed. I was actually, what a question. well, so um, I was in the emergency department visiting yesterday on Sunday and 50% of the children that were on the list were respiratory illnesses. Um, so far we've had from our emergency department urgent care entire network we've had about 447 children with respiratory illnesses and 39 of them had those been admitted and that's from September 4th to September 7th. So really over the last less than a week a large proportion and if we look at the time before 
we had almost 100 over three weeks or so. So we're still on the high upswing. Mm -hmm. The number, you have 447 children uh, treated. For, who came in through the emergency department with respiratory illness. From September 4th until? September 7th. So it's basically one out of three children. And there was about 900 before that. Correct. 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 As the number, wow. And then the number of who have been admitted was at the recent... 39 plus 97? 89. Or 89. 89 plus 39 admitted through this point. So 89 was... Uh, From a, a, August 15, 18th through this current time. Wow. So one out of three children are coming to the emergency department with respiratory problems. That's a lot. So my level of concern is really high for children who have asthma that is not treated properly. Because if they get the viral infection, that really sets them up to come to the emergency department, be out of control, and end up in the hospital. So those are the particular kids that I really worry about. Most of the children really will do fine with viral infections, but that's the kids I would really have parents be on the alert for. And then those who have never wheezed before, if they hear their child having a hard time breathing, that's when you need to access health care. Unfortunately, we have no viral, antiviral treatment and no vaccine for this. Influenza, we're fortunate we have a vaccine that does a good job of keeping you out of the hospital and keeping you from dying. Commissioner, could you say your title one more time, or the title you would prefer to be used? Queen of the Universe? <laughs> just, just kidding! <laughs> just kidding! <laughs> No, uh, Dr. Chris Nyquist, uh, Pediatric Infectious Disease Physician, uh, Medical Director for Infection Prevention and Control at Children's Hospital Colorado. You like the Queen of the Universe. I think that one's better. Okay. She-Ra, you know, it's she, she, she yeah. could be. Could be. Doctor, are you seeing kids within the Colorado region coming from specific areas? Um, I don't know how, you know, our reach throughout the region really goes throughout the Rockies. And so I don't know how many children have been transferred. I know that in our infectious disease group, we're getting a lot of calls from other locations because their hospitals are full, trying to get the children here for care. All, all ED visits, visits to the emergency department. Not necessarily, but potentially, but it is a huge upswing, upswing for how many kids we're seeing. And, you know, we haven't talked about this in September before, and I've been here since 1992. Did you say this was a 12 to 15% increase over last September or over two seasons? It was a 12 to 15% increase over the last year exactly at the same time. And that's a 12 to 15% increase of respiratory illnesses? Like or visits to our, into our kind of emergency department and for admissions. So it's not an expected time where we think about being really busy. The routine kind of things come in, but now everyone, you know, in the hospital has a respiratory illness, and you walk around, and that's what we're seeing. So it's a 12 to 15 percent increase um, over um, visits to the emergency department over last year. Same time. And and for admissions. So from 2013 to 2014, our upswing has been 12 to 15 percent for visits and for the hospitalizations. And that's Total, right. Not just respiratory. Not just respiratory. Okay. But it makes it really busy for the hospital when you don't expect that. And that's, uh, we're having a tough time keeping keeping things going. We're working it. Did you start to expect to do this before the city and started to gear up, or did, did you start seeing some people coming through your door? Well, one of the ways that we sorted out the things were going on is that we publish every week or every other week something called Bug Watch, which is on our external um, website. And we had this rhinovirus upswing when you look at the picture that is like climbing a mountain. And so we were seeing a lot of lab tests for rhinovirus positive. And then the emergency department was talking about how busy they were. Our respiratory therapists were talking about trying to keep up with doing so many respiratory treatments. We were running out of medication. It all was just a culmination of something's going on. We're stable and we keep on getting medication from other supplies, but we're constantly working to make sure we can take care of um, everyone's breathing difficulties. Albuterol. Albuterol, correct. Yeah. How does that correlate? You guys see the numbers here. How does that correlate to cases who might not go to the hospital, might just go see what's on the executive 
So I, I don't know how the primary care physicians are dealing with it as they always do when they have more wheezing. And so some of those patients may be not as, you know, having a tough time. So I don't know from the primary care perspective of how they're doing. When they need to get admitted, then they end up calling us. And so I don't have those numbers. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. So. <laughs> okay. We, we say it every time. I know. I, you say it every day. I say it every day. Thanks, Dan. Yeah.